So, you've finally got that copy of Little Samson you've always wanted. You found a deal on Craigslist for $300. A family found a bunch of games in their mother's attic after she passed away, and you quickly jump on the ad, and it's still available. You race over there, cash in hand, you secure the deal of the century. Then you get home, and the Little Samson and other rare games are fakes. You've been had. Welcome to Retronomics, the series that evaluates price trends in video games, and today we're taking a look at an all too common issue, reproductions or repos, or as most people like to call them, counterfeit games. Reproductions in the game collecting space are pretty interesting. In almost every other collector space, owning reproductions isn't something to really go out and then admit to other collectors. Sure, if you're not entirely invested in the hobby, what's the harm of buying a fake Rolex or coach bag from Korea if it looks the part? But if you're collecting watches, it doesn't really make sense to keep those reproductions on display next to your originals or even even go out and buy them purposefully. But reproductions in the game collecting space, well, they're actually pretty common and tolerated. Counterfeit games have existed for years. Most common are the ones in countries with high import tariffs. Brazil has a high import tariff charging as much as 70% on electronic goods. It was so high that the PlayStation 2 first released in 2000 in the United States didn't reach the country officially until 2009. As such, finding counterfeit versions of popular games is actually pretty common nowadays. In the United States, the most popular form of counterfeit is Pokemon games, and Pokemon games at one point were pretty difficult to find when it was really, really popular, so if you found it at a mall kiosk or a flea market and it was cheaper than what you could find at the store, then you snatched it up, unaware that you were supporting a counterfeit market. Now with the internet around, it's pretty easy to determine determine what's fake and what's real, but still, reproductions exist and they're actually being sought out by people who consider themselves collectors and we're still not sure what the long term effects of having them among legitimate copies is. And to get it out of the way real quick, as far as I can tell, reproductions don't really affect the price of the original copies of the games. In fact, I'd wager that the existence of these reproductions has actually increased the value of the originals based on the very fact that collectors are willing to pay more for the reassurance that their item is original. But because reproductions are actually sought after, especially for very expensive games, having them circulated in the wild has the potential to destroy the confidence in the retro gaming market. The most recent concern is the existence of five Nintendo World Championship cartridge perfect reproductions. The Nintendo World Championship cartridge is the most valuable game for the system, fetching $18,000 for the gray cart and around $40,000 for the gold, and they're so rare that there's a site dedicated to keeping track of who owns which copy. A reproduction NWC cart isn't anything new, you can buy one from Retro USB for $75. And there's no mistaking that it's a reproduction. Aside from the obvious reproduction on the front label, the cartridge is a translucent blue, a color never produced for original cartridges, and the dip switches are in the middle instead of in the upper left hand corner. Also, it's not even an original NES board. It's a brand new board specifically to use for this game. But that hasn't stopped people from attempting to replicate NWC cartridges to resemble the real thing. Most are obviously fake if you pay enough attention to them, but one person has gone through great lengths to make their very own perfect replica right down to sourcing period appropriate parts. And it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal, but it is so close to an original that only an expert will be able to tell if it was legit. And worst of all, this person is selling them. Per the eBay listing, the printed circuit is identical to the original. All essential components are from the year 1990, identical to the original, and even sourced from original NES components. The dip switches are identical, and the shell is a carcass of an original Nintendo cartridge. It's pretty impressive that this person went through such great lengths to create a reproduction that's so close to the original, 
but here's where it gets gray. There's now five perfect replicas in existence, one gold and four gray, and the engineer who made them updated the Nintendo fandom wiki to include their cartridge numbers 284, 342, 310, and 228. Now, I know what you're thinking. Nick, what's the big deal? You just said that the existence of reproductions don't affect the value of the original. If somebody wants to make reproduction cartridges on their own time, what's the big deal? I don't really have too big of an issue with reproduction cartridges existing. I know for a lot of people, having a copy of Little Samson for $1,000 is pretty silly. So having a copy that you bought for $25 from China just to have on your shelf instead of just emulating it is acceptable in my book. I even have a handful of official reproductions from Limited Run, Secret of Monkey Island for the Sega CD, Shadows of the Empire for the Nintendo 64, and Metal Storm for the Nintendo Entertainment System. But what really is important for me is how far from the original copy the reproduction looks like. I have this unreleased game of Days of Thunder that looks really close to an original copy, but you can see in the bottom right hand corner that the Nintendo seal is not a real seal and that extends to the cartridge as well, which has a dark sticker on the back and Phillips head screws instead of Torx screws like the official cartridges. The back of the box also details the story about how this game came to light, and the barcode even says Mellow Yellow on it and unlicensed by Nintendo for play on the NES in the other corner. The other reproductions that I have in my collection are official re-releases and there's no mistake in that these didn't come out 20 years ago. My Metal Storm copy is silver instead of the traditional gray, my copies of Shadow of the Empire and Star Wars are translucent, and the same thing with my top loan shooter collection that just came from Castlemania Games are all translucent as well. But one thing that really stands out as a clear reproduction and one that I really like in my collection is this copy of Star Fox 2 for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. As you're aware, Star Fox 2 never made it officially to the Super Nintendo, but it did make it to the Super Nintendo Classic. And reproductions of Star Fox 2 aren't anything new, but this one, not only does it contain the same version as the Classic, it's from Rose Color Gaming and it's blue and it also lights up, so no one is going to mistake this for a real game. That being said, I would much rather have the original copy of the game instead of a reproduction. And while I do have reproductions, they're mostly official releases sanctioned by the original publisher of the game. And I would take an official reproduction of an expensive game like Shantae for the Game Boy Color and pay retail for it before I would buy a cheap knockoff from China. The concerns that I do have about reproductions is when they start getting passed off as originals. Most people who buy reproductions know they're getting a reproduction and they're okay with it. But the issue is that what happens when a person decides to sell their collection or if they pass away and the family sells it off? Do they disclose the reproductions? And if it gets sold without that disclosure, what's to stop the person who bought it from selling it off as a genuine if they're unaware? Right now, for the most part, it's pretty obvious to spot a fake if you're handling the game in person. The plastic is thinner, the label doesn't have the right coloring, or the printer is so of low quality so you can see the bleeding around the edges of the text, and in some cases, especially with the Super Nintendo cartridges, you can tell because the screws on the front aren't even metal. Again, I'm okay with people buying reproductions if they want to buy it and if they know what they're getting into. But if you're selling reproductions and passing them off as legitimate, then there's something wrong here. Nothing is worse than buying a game, bringing it home, and finding out that it's not legitimate. And sometimes these games work just fine, but others can potentially damage your equipment, either because the voltage is incorrect or the boards are thicker and can damage the actual pins of your console over time. In the short term, reproductions aren't really hurting the game market because current collectors know what to look for if they're smart, and if you're just starting out, there are a lot of resources to refer to so that you don't get burned. However, in the long term, as older games get harder to find, you're going to see more reproductions in retail spaces, and that's what's so worrying. 
I know my game store doesn't have much of a selection anymore like they used to. People just aren't turning in these old games and you're not finding lots of games from rental stores on eBay anymore. They sometimes have some ROM hacks on physical cartridges, but they're not selling blatantly counterfeit games. But other stores? Well, Mad Little Pixel detailed it on his channel just the other day. A retail store in California is selling reproduction games mixed in with legit copies, and they're expecting the full amount that you would normally spend on a legitimate copy. And that's pretty concerning, not just because the practice is a gray area, but it destroys the consumer confidence in the retro video game market. If a legitimate brick and mortar store is passing off fake games as real and you get burned by it, how likely are you to trust other stores in that area? And how likely are you going to continue collecting games if you're constantly running into these reproductions? GameStop had this issue almost immediately after they started selling retro games again. They assured gamers that they had experts who knew what to look for and despite that reassurance, they sold countless counterfeits and had to stop selling high dollar games. And even though they did so unknowingly, it still makes you think twice when buying from them in the future, especially when you can't expect the game yourself. Game collecting does rely on new people coming into the space. Contrary to popular belief, it's not just adults buying games from their childhood. There are people who weren't alive even for the Nintendo 64 scooping up the games because they enjoy collecting games and want to experience them on original hardware. But if it gets too difficult to find legitimate games for reasonable prices, there's not going to be a lot of new people willing to buy them and eventually the hobby will start to die out. At least collecting individual games that have a wall of games. There are still alternative ways to play games on original hardware like flashcards and ODEs and I think those will probably affect the market way more than reproductions will. But that's just one way to look at it. Let me know what you think in those comments down below. Do you think reproductions can ruin the game collecting market? And what's your opinion on reproductions in general? Do you own any? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with those who might find it interesting. If you're new here, consider subscribing for future content. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Snicktendo. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time.